for some reason, I don't know why, I've become obsessed with just breeding hundreds of shrimp. I don't know what it is. I don't care too much about the color. I don't care about the grades. I just want to see hundreds of shrimp in a tank, eating food, and just lots of things going on in the tank. I don't know what it is. Today we're going to be breeding three different types of shrimp. So up in this tank, I've already got this tank set up, but in here we have a very special type of shrimp. These are my snowball shrimp. The reason they're called snowballs is they're white and when they become pregnant, when the females get eggs, it looks like little snowballs, it's super cute. These are a neocaridina and I personally prefer neocaridinas, they're heaps easier to take care of and if you're a beginner, you'll want to be getting neocaridinas just because they are so much easier. I literally throw them in tap. If they start having trouble, I put a bit of coral in there or something like that, but for the most part, they're super easy. Over here, we've got two more types of shrimp. So in here, we've got some really cool blue dream shrimp. I bred these myself. There must be about 15 or so in here. I also have some lovely yellow cherry shrimp from Susie, one of my staff members. She's done a really good job breeding these, and we're gonna be breeding them for her in the fish room. To breed shrimp, you want to keep these guys heated. Uh, I'm putting these guys in a 25 degree tank. So, what's that, like 77 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit? That's like 77 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. I'm not Google. You don't want them to drop below 20 degrees Celsius or you'll start having problems. They're in a 20 gallon tank or an 80 litre aquarium, so it's like two foot long. You can put these in a four foot tank. You can put them in a tiny little box. I keep them in a jar in my office. They're not fussy. To feed these guys, I'll be feeding them bug buffet. Um, it's a little bit high protein for shrimp, like I prefer to feed them a little bit lower protein, but they're not fussy, they'll just take it. So if you want to breed them, you'll obviously need males and females. Males have like more of a slender body, normally don't have as much colour as females, but there's exceptions to that. You'll see females will have like a, a rounded abdomen, and this is where they'll keep the eggs, because when they breed, the females will lay their eggs and they'll keep them underneath their pleopods, or I call them shrimp flaps sometimes. Um, that's where they keep them, and uh, that's how you tell, like males don't really have that. Males have smaller ones, they use them for swimming around. The important thing with breeding shrimp, it's so important, you need to acclimate them properly, otherwise you have issues. By putting them into a tank too early, or like too quickly, you're going to stress them out and they're going to think they need to molt, and they'll do an early molt and this kills them. So you want to do a really slow acclimation, I'm going to show you how I do that. The way we do this is using a bit of airline tubing, you can get this at your shop, you use it for your sponge filters and all that, and we do a drip acclimation. Yeah, you see down here, this is going to come out like a siphon, just from pressure. So what we're going to do is tie up the end of this, oh the lights went off, <laughs> we'll turn it back on, there we go. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so I'll redo it. Basically, you want to have your siphon and then at the end of your tube, you just want to tie a little knot and make it do a drip. And what we're going to do is that's going to slowly drip the new water for their new tank into their container. And we're just going to put that in like this. Super easy. I normally do this for about 20 to 30 minutes. I've seen people do it for days with really expensive shrimp. So like, you can't do this for too long. Like, if you're new to shrimp and you're just really worried about your shrimp making it home safe, do it for like five hours. Like, I'm not even joking, just do it. The longer, the better. And that's just gonna slowly get them used to their new tank. The idea with shrimp, just do the, the least amount possible to the tank. Just set it up, put your aged, put your tank conditioner, put your water conditioner in there, keep them a stable temperature, and do like a 10% water change once every two weeks. Like, they don't need lots of attention, just leave them alone and they'll do really well. For the finishing touches for my tank, what we're going to do is add uh, kind of like a food source plus sort of like a decoration. The trick to adding Indian almond leaves is not too much, just a little bit. Um, one of these leaves will be fine for a tank this size, but if you add like five or ten, you're going to crash the pH in your tank. Just add a little bit, but what will happen, this leaf will float for a few days and then it will eventually sink, at which point the shrimp will do their job as detritivores and start decomposing this leaf. It's kind of cool to watch. So we'll add one of these to each tank, whilst also keeping the drip acclimation going. There we go. No, it's still going. So we'll add one of these, and then we'll do it over here as well. This one's 100 percent gonna fall out. Yeah, it did. Put that in there. I'm doing like acrobatics. I've set up a ton of shrimp tanks before, so I wanna make it a little bit more fun. 
I'm going to show you guys how you can add plant cuttings to the tops of the tanks to make it like a little bit more interesting. We'll go pilfer some out of the shop. Yep. All right, well now we're in the shop and we're going to use these. Yep. Nice plant here. Use that one. These cyanogodiums have been going well. Could do that. One of them. Kind of cute. Oh, there was a big pothos here before I saw. I needed to rip it out. It's a huge one. It's stuck to the wall. <laughs> I was going to yank it. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, we'll put that back in. We'll put a bit back in for it. <laughs> I just pilfered the whole thing. I've got three so far. We need one more. Neon gold, possless, whatever. Let's see how it goes. There we go. So now we're back with some plants. Here, this is a little cyanogodium. This is some philodendron, Burl Marx or New Yorker. Just your normal common pothos, which has gone nuts in the shop. And then a neon green, or well not neon green, gold pothos or something like that. You can see the level of water on our shrimp containers has also risen. We'll just take a nice cutting of this one. We'll just put this in the top of our tank and we'll just submerge these nodes in the water and they'll grow roots. So just wedge it in like that. Doesn't need to be fancy, it'll find a way to grow. And then the gold pothos. I'm not gonna be surprised if this one does the best. Put our philodendron New Yorker over here. Put the philodendron in with the blue dreams. So we'll just wedge this guy down here as well. Sweet. It's that easy. The plants are gonna grow nice roots like this. It'll help filter out the water, um, takes all the nitrates out of the water. And yeah, it just turns it into a real ecosystem. So I prefer the look to it. Gives the shrimp a space to hide. And it's a little bit more interesting than just adding Java moss to your tank, so cool. I just thought of another cool thing to add to our little shrimp tank is gonna be an algae eater. Something that works really well together, our shrimp and bristle nose. What I normally do is, in my shrimp breeding tanks, I either put a pair of bristlenose to breed, or I just add a baby bristlenose to grow out. But I picked out a little baby albino bristlenose and a common bristlenose. And I'm just curious to see how big these get as well over the next month. I've already got a little baby longfin in my, with my snowballs, so let's so put the common bristlenose in with the blues. You can go in there. We'll put the albino in, the yellow cherry tank. Here it goes. All right, so the time's come. We're going to add the shrimp to their new tanks. So we'll stop the drips. You can see the water level's risen as well. Something cool, I actually noticed there was a already buried female in here. So there's already a pregnant girl. So that'll help to get the population booming quick. Oh, they're so dark. In they go. There we go. Put these guys in. Oh, they're so yellow. In they go. Well, they're all set up now and that just shows you how easy it is to do a shrimp tank. You can obviously decorate it, do whatever you want with it, but this is the simplest way to do it. So I honestly think the snowballs are probably gonna breed the most, I don't know. Like I added like five females in there and they all had like eggs in there. So I think they'll be the most in the snowballs, but yeah, I guess we'll find out. So it's now been a month and I'm back from the holiday. We're back with the shrimp and I'm pleasantly surprised at how well this did. So I've gotten babies in two of the tanks. If you come up here and look at the snowball tank, there's been a ton of babies. There's definitely two or three batches worth of babies in here and maybe there's 30 to 40 in there. So like, you can see how quickly you can build up your numbers of shrimp. Like if I left these guys for another three months, those babies will grow out, breed again, and then before you know it, the whole floor is just gonna be covered in shrimps. I think the bristlenose in there has grown quite a bit too, which is kind of fascinating. The blue dream shrimp have done so well. I can't, I can't believe how well these do. 
They're honestly easier for me to breed than any of the other shrimp. I have the most success with Blue Dreams, Red Cherries and Snowballs. There's easily, baby-wise, like another 50 in here. They're all stuck on the filter, so I have to get a bit of food to try and entice them out. And then the yellow cherries, I didn't actually have much success with, so I don't think I've seen a single baby in here. I actually had quite a few of the parents just die off. This is the thing with shrimp, they're very, very sensitive, and we did all the correct things. We drip acclimated them, we did everything we needed to. They're very fragile and they die really easily, so that's why I say like buy like 10 of them, because you want them to like if you lose three or four of them, you've still got a chance of building up a nice colony. So besides from that, the plants have done really well as well. There's heaps of roots. If you look in here, when we added this, there was no roots. So, so if you look up above, you can see a nice little plant starting to develop as well. I sent down some straggly roots there, but all in all, still pretty interesting. I mean, like for going on a holiday, leaving everything here and just having someone throw food in, I'd still call this a major success. Like if you, think that this any of this stuff's hard you know breeding shrimp and all of that <laughs> this just goes to show how easy it can be so thank you so much for watching the video guys and i'll see you in the next one